So art writer, biographer of John Craxton, and curator of this very exhibit, Ian Collins, welcome to our show. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the exhibition, of course, but I like to start by discussing your favorite artist. What really jumped out at you when you met Craxton or saw his work? I knew his work already, but I met him um, 10 years before he died. We became great friends. And what I loved about him is what I loved about the pictures. He was a complete free spirit. He was very funny, very anarchic, very clever. And he just completely went his own way. He did his own thing for good or for in, sometimes for him for bad because he got into a lot of trouble. But he always had a life of great adventure and freedom. And I really loved that. And some critics called him a neo-romantic artist. But he rather called himself a kind of Arcadian. How's it? What do you make of Craxton's work exactly? How would you describe his style? Well, he hated labels and he was just doing his own thing. And he, uh, he would refuse any kind of education, any kind of tuition. Uh, and he was amazingly fortunate because his parents encouraged him to do what he wanted. And all he wanted to do was draw and paint in the way he wanted to do it. He didn't pass any uh, exam, even in art. The only qualification he ever passed in his whole life was to, tr was to drive a motorbike. That's how he got around the Aegean, mostly. And he just went his own way. And so he, he, although he was linked to various movements, the Arcadian spirit meant freedom, it meant a life in the sun, in the Mediterranean, that's where he wanted to be always. And he got here when he was 23. Speaking of which, so it won't be wrong to say he was kind of quite obsessed with Greece, right? So what was the trigger behind that actually? And what did he find when he went there finally? He, he, he learned by looking and he, so he went to museums and he loved ancient art and he loved El Greco and he also had this romantic idea of the Mediterranean. He wanted to be in the south in the sun. He was actually ill. He had tuberculosis. He didn't know it. He just knew that he was often t exhausted but it was actually tuberculosis. So he needed this hot dry climate much more than he really knew. And when he finally got here, just after the war, when he was 23, he never looked back. He never painted a picture that wasn't based on the Aegean. And he opened out, he'd been this very private, uh, introspective person who just opened out to the world and became a portraitist of other people. He loved people. But he also had a fascination with Istanbul, didn't he? Like, he, did. he visited Turkey a many times. And do we, like, see any artworks reflecting his fascination? We, we do indeed. He came, first of all, in 1949. He adored Istanbul, uh, all the different layers of history in Istanbul. He particularly loved the, the Byzantine mosaics in, in Hagia Sophia. And they really influenced his art. Uh, in the picture behind you, actually, which, we, which the cameras probably can't show, he was working away with this flattened, brilliantly coloured patterning uh, that he put into his art. And what he loved was uh, pictures that appeared to be contemporary, but which actually went back down the layers of history. And Byzantine art, he just adored. And what about the carpet over there? The carpet, he loved Turkish carpets. He loved weaving. And he was uh, thrown out of Greece uh, when his jokes ran away with him because he laughed at a policeman, which you don't, didn't do when it was a military regime, and he was kicked out. And he designed this amazing tapestry in Scotland, which has never been outside Scotland before this exhibition. And it, he put in everything he thought about the Aegean uh, and, and everything he loved. And it's, 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 it's the world he, he was exiled from and he, he, he hoped to get back to. Do you think during his lifetime he got the attention he deserved or, or like was he overlooked? He was overlooked but he conspired in that because he just liked living. He said that life is more important than art and he had this life of pleasure but he, that's what he painted. So I think we can only see this his story at the end pretty uh, uh, and, and this whole picture which is just a journey into Jordan. Uh, and that's what I think it brings to the world now. And it's a spring-like exhibition, and it would just cheer people up. One of the leading critics said that he was a painter who struggled hard against a ha handicap of happiness. His pictures weren't serious enough because they were too joyful. Well, I think a handicap of happiness is a very good handicap myself. And like, I think we should all have it. And uh, um, so he was just abs absorbed in color. He was absorbed in light, in heat, all the things that he always wanted in the Aegean and that he found here, the, the Arcadia he always longed for. 
But speaking of happiness, like let's take David Hockney, for instance. He's also like spreading joy through art. And I don't know if it's right to compare these two, but what's your comment on that? Well, they were friends. They, I think there's quite a similarity actually because they're more and more absorbed in color. Uh, and John was also a designer, a graphic designer. He, did, he was a book designer. He designed a wonderful ballet for Margot Fontaine. And we have a film of it in the exhibition. Uh, and uh, he, 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 he hoped he can turn his hand to anything. And that's what John did. He thought that art and life were enmeshed really. He just wanted the life. Uh, he wanted the Taverna life. He wanted to just be painting the pictures. He didn't want to finish the pictures. He didn't want to sell them. He just wanted to be doing it. And he, so he would take his sketchbook into the Tavernas and the cafes, sketch away. Then he'd go home and work on these pictures for years and years sometimes, uh, 15 years in one case. He, 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 he wasn't about selling, he was about being. So what new ways did he discover for the art world in the 20th century, you think? I, th I think it's a, it's a very important lesson. First of all, that life comes first. And secondly, that you need to absorb all these influences to make your own voice. Be, indi be original, be individual, don't be trained, don't be constrained. Be yourself, be free. That's the message of, message of John Crackton for artists and for everybody, which I think is the key, the key to life, really. I think that's an amazing message. And so now let's talk about this exhibition titled John Craxton Drawn to Light. A comprehensive display, as far as I can see, and with nearly like 200 pieces, including artworks, as well as like his personal belongings. And can you give us more details about the show, please? Well, the first exhibition for John in Turkey also happens to be the biggest exhibition of John anywhere because we are so fortunate in having 40 pictures from the collection of Omer Koç who is the patron of, of the Mesha uh, Gallery. And there, so it's the biggest show there's ever been. And um, some of these works have never been seen before. And so it's very, very exciting. And it's a, it's a great chance for the people of Istanbul, the people of Turkey, to just absorb this wonderful life, uh, which is paying tribute to, to Turkey, is paying tribute to the Aegean. It's, it's the life you have, you, it's the place you know, but through new eyes, perhaps. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here on Showcase today, Ian Collins. Thank you so much.